In section 6.5, I'm going to go over a couple of special techniques for factoring certain kinds of binomials, and we'll also talk about a general factoring strategy. Now the first technique I'd like to talk about is factoring the difference of squares. And when you're factoring the difference of squares, whenever you start out with two terms, which are both perfect squares, so you've got you know, one expression squared minus another expression squared, and they have to be subtracted, you can factor that into an a plus b times an a minus b. So for example, let's say you had y squared minus 81. Now that's an example of a difference of squares because y squared is y times y and 81 is 9 times 9 and they're subtracted. So that would factor into y plus 9 times y minus 9. And if you were to FOIL that out to check your answer, you'd find that y times y gives you the y squared here. And the outers, negative 9y and positive 9y, cancel each other out. And then you have the lasts, a positive 9 times a negative 9, giving you the negative 81. Um, here's another example. Let's say we had 25x squared minus... 9. So this is an example of a difference of squares because 25x squared equals 5x times another 5x. So it's the square of 5x. And 9 is 3 times 3. So that's the square of 3. And again, they're subtracted. So that would factor into 5x plus 3 times 5x minus 3. Notice you always have a plus in one factor and a minus in the other. All right, let's try one more of these. Let's say we had a to the fourth minus 81 b to the fourth. Now this first term, a to the fourth, is really a squared times another a squared. And the second term is 9b squared times another 9b squared. So this would factor into a squared plus 9b squared times a squared minus 9b squared. Now with factoring, you always want to try to go farther if you can. And notice in the second set of parentheses, you have another difference of squares because a squared is a times a and 9b squared would be 3b times another 3b, and they're subtracted. Now, the first set of parentheses are added, and you can't factor a sum of squares any farther. So that would have to be left alone. So I'll just carry that part down. But that second set of parentheses can be broken up into two separate parts. And you'd have a plus 3b, and a minus 3b. And so your final completely factored answer would be this bottom line here. Next I'd like to go over how to factor the sum or difference of cubes. Now let's say you started out with the sum of two cubes. So you had an a cubed plus a b cubed. You'll be able to factor that down into a plus b you know, that's a binomial, times the trinomial a squared minus ab plus b squared. And similarly, let's say you started out with the difference between two perfect cubes. So you had an a cubed minus a b cubed. Then that would factor into a minus b times a squared plus AB plus B squared. Now one way to help remember this is that whatever the sign is in your original problem, so if it's plus, then there's going to be a plus in that first set of parentheses and then a minus in the second one. And again, if there's a minus in the original problem, then there's also going to be a minus inside that first set of parentheses 
and then the opposite sign in that middle term and that trinomial. And notice this last term is always positive and so is the first term. So it's just the middle term in this trinomial that could either be positive or negative. So let's look at the example x cubed plus 8. Now x cubed is a perfect cube because it's the cube of x. And 8 is a perfect cube because it's the cube of 2. 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8. And they're added. So that's a sum of two perfect cubes. So we're going to use this first equation to help us factor that. And the first factor would just be x plus 2. And the second factor would be x squared minus, and then you have to take the 2 times the x, so 2x, plus, and then the 2 squared, so 2 squared is 4, so it would be plus 4. In the next example, we have 64y cubed minus 27. So 64y cubed is the cube of 4y, because 4y times 4y times 4y would equal 64y cubed. And 27 is the cube of 3, because 3 times 3 times 3 does equal 27. And they're subtracted. So this is the difference between two perfect cubes. So we'll use this second equation. And that would factor into 4y minus 3 for the first part. And then for the trinomial, we have to take 4y and square it. So 4y times another 4y is 16y squared. And then it's going to be a plus. And then we're going to have to take the 3 times the 4y. So that would be plus 12y. And then for the last term, we're going to take the 3 and square that. So it would be plus 9. Now in the last few sections of this chapter, we've learned a lot of different ways of factoring polynomials. We've talked about factoring out the greatest common factor. We talked about factoring by grouping, factoring trinomials, both with a leading coefficient of 1 and those that don't have a leading coefficient of 1. And now today we've looked at um, factoring a difference of squares or the sum or difference of cubes. So now that we've talked about all those different kinds of factoring, it's important that we have a general strategy so we know how to approach factoring on any problem that we're given. So the first thing you're always going to want to do is always factor out the GCF, the greatest common factor, first. Okay, so always look to see if there's a GCF that you can factor out of every term. And sometimes there won't be, so you can't do anything, but you always want to check for that first. And if there is a GCF other than 1, then factor that out in the very beginning. Now, after you've factored out the GCF, the number of terms in your problem, and remember, terms are separated by plus and minus signs, the number of terms you have will kind of be a clue as to what method you should use. If you have two terms in your problem, then you want to try difference of squares or the sum or difference of cubes. Those are the techniques we just got finished talking about. And those are the techniques that you would use if you had only two terms. Now, if there are three terms, then you have a trinomial. And let's assume it's of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, right here. Now, it depends on whether a equals 1. If a equals 1, meaning the leading coefficient in front of this x squared is a 1, which means it won't even be written there, then you can just go ahead and factor it into a FOIL problem. And you'll put an x in each case. And you'll just try to find two numbers here that multiply together to equal this last number and add up to the middle number. However, if a doesn't equal 1, so a is some, uh, some number other than 1, then you've got a little bit harder problem on your hands. And this is, remember, when you had to multiply the first number times the last number and then split the middle term up. So, you know, you'll be starting out with something of this type and you multiply a times c and you'll get your answer, and then you'll find two numbers that multiply out to equal that answer, 
and add up to equal the middle number. And then once you do that, you split that middle term, which gives you four terms, and use grouping. So with a trinomial, there's really two different kinds of trinomial problems. There's the simpler case where a equals 1, where you can just do your FOIL problem. And then there's the harder case where a doesn't equal 1. And there you have to actually split that middle term into two and use grouping. And if there are four terms in your original problem, then you're going to want to use grouping. And remember, grouping, you group the first two together and the last two together, and then you work it out from there. So just to go over the strategy one more time, always factor out the GCF first. That's extremely important because sometimes if you don't do that step, then you can't do the further steps. Then, depending on whether there's two, three, or four terms in your problem, you can use the appropriate technique. If there's two terms, try difference of squares or sum or difference of cubes. If there's three terms, figure out whether it's a simpler case tri trinomial or a more difficult case, depending on whether A equals 1 or not, and factor accordingly. And if there's four terms, use grouping. So let's now try a few examples using this general strategy. So in this problem, we have 4x cubed y minus 4y to the fourth. So as we said, the first thing we want to do is try to find the GCF. Is there something in common to these two terms that we can pull out? They both have a 4, and they both have a y. Remember, we have to use the smaller power. They don't both have an x, so we can't pull out x. So the GCF would just be 4y. So we'll write that down, followed by a set of parentheses. And that would leave us with, let's see, x cubed minus y cubed. Now we want to attempt to factor the expression that's inside the set of parentheses. Now the question is, how many terms is that? Clearly it's two terms. x cubed and y cubed are the two terms, and they're separated by that minus sign. So we have to try one of the techniques that we've learned that deals with two terms. The only choices are difference of squares, and that's not a difference of squares because these exponents are not squares. Sum of cubes, well it's not sum of cubes because it's subtracted, and difference of cubes. That's what it is, it's a difference of two cubes. So we'll use that technique. Now this 4y that we factored out just carries down, and then we're going to factor this difference of cubes using the technique we learned earlier today, which would be x minus y times x squared plus xy plus y squared. Now in this next example, we have 9x cubed minus 36x. So again, what's the GCF between these two terms? Well, 9 divides evenly into 36, so we know 9 is a common factor. And both terms have x. So again, use the smaller power, x of the first. So the GCF would be 9x. So we'll factor that out. And that would give us x squared minus 4 inside parentheses. Now again, how many terms do we have inside parentheses? There's two, right? And they're separated by this minus sign. So we want to check the techniques that we use for two terms. Difference of squares is one of them, and this is a difference of squares because this is x times x and that's 2 times 2, and they're subtracted, so it's a difference. So that 9x will just carry down and then we'll factor the second set of parentheses into two separate sets, which would be x plus 2 and x minus 2. Okay, now we have a trinomial. And again, we want to look for a common factor first. There's three terms here. Um, 5 divides evenly into all the coefficients. And then every single term has x in it, and the smallest power is x squared. So the GCF would be 5 x squared. So let's start by factoring out the 5x squared. So we have 5x squared times, and then we have to leave ourselves enough room for three terms inside the parentheses. It would be 3x squared plus 11x minus 4. 
So now we want to attempt to factor this expression that's inside this set of parentheses. And that's a trinomial. There's three terms. There's 3x squared, 11x, and 4. And they're separated by the plus and the minus sign. So it's a trinomial, and the leading coefficient is 3. So this is going to be the more difficult kind of trinomial to do. This is the kind where you have to take the 3 times a negative 4 on the side here. Let's do that work. So 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. And then we have to find two numbers that multiply out to equal negative 12. And those same two numbers have to add up to equal 11. And that's pretty easy here. It's positive 12 and negative 1. And then you split this middle term into two terms using those as coefficients. So you would have 3x squared plus 12x minus 1x minus 4. And now I am going to have to carry this 5x squared down at the end, but I'm not going to write it down every time at this point. I'll just remember to bring that down in front of my answer at the end. So now that I have four terms, I'll use grouping. So we'll group the first two terms together and the last two. And we want to pull out the GCF from the first two. So we have 3 goes into 3 and 12, so 3, and then x. So it would be 3x, which gives us x plus 4. And remember the way grouping works is whatever you have in parentheses here, x plus 4, you have to leave a little space and then duplicate it on this side. And then you have to figure out what number would you put in front of that parentheses so that when you distributed it through, it would come out to be negative 1x minus 4, which you have above there. And the answer is minus 1. So it's a minus 1. And then the x plus 4 becomes the common factor. And then the 3x minus the 1 get put together in to the other one. And then again, we have to remember to bring that 5x squared down and put it in front of that whole answer because that was the original GCF. And that would be your final answer. Okay, let's try one more example. Again, we, in this problem, we have three terms, so it's a trinomial, and we're going to look for the GCF. Now, 2 goes in all three numbers, so it's 2, and x is in every term, and the smallest power is the first power, so it would be 2x. But remember, we also talked about when this leading term, the one with the highest power of x on it, is negative, you'd want to factor out a negative number as part of your GCF. So our GCF will be negative 2x. And when you factor out a negative number like this, it's going to change all three signs. So the minus will change to a plus inside the parentheses. So we'll get a positive x squared. And the plus will change to a minus. So we'll have minus 10x. And then this minus will change into a plus. So plus 16. Okay, now that we've done that step, we always want to try to see if we can factor what's inside the parentheses. And this is a trinomial. Now this is the simpler case trinomial because the implied coefficient right here in front of this x squared is really a 1. So with this kind of a trinomial, it's a little easier to finish this off. The GCF just gets carried down. And we should be able to put our parentheses right in immediately for this kind of trinomial. And we'll put an x in the front of each one. And all we need to do is find two numbers that multiply out to equal 16 and add up to negative 10. So two numbers that multiply out to 16 and add up to negative 10. So it would be a negative 8 and a negative 2. So it's going to be minus 8 and minus 2. And that would be our final factored answer.